I can remember looking very early on at the speech charts and developing charts, and I thought, she should be making more sounds. So we knew, we, we just knew early on that something, something um, was wrong in the fact that she wasn't de developing like she should. It was, what, two and a half years old when she imitated for the first time. Nothing was explaining right. the symptoms. Annabrook was a puzzle, and we were getting pieces here and there, but it didn't bring it all together. The Hudson Alpha Institute is located in uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and is uh, a nonprofit center dedicated to uh, genetic and genomic uh, research and education and economic development. Something like one or two percent of children have a significant physical or intellectual disability, and the, the majority of those are likely to be genetic conditions where they have a genetic origin. So we set out to start a project to use genomic technologies to diagnose children with unexplained neurological problems. We uh, had the good fortune of meeting up early with Martina Bevin, who is a pediatric neurologist that sees patients right here in Huntsville. Some of the people that have been in this program I've cared for for 15 years and always knew there was something unexplained that we had to try to answer and only with the advent of whole genome sequencing we got to the answer. There was an area, what was it called? A deficit in her white matter in the brain. Dr. Bebin didn't feel like that gave us the answer, but that's the most concrete <laughs> evidence right. we've had, right. you know, right. and she just still and couldn't. She kept saying genetic, genetic. She did, she we've did. We've had the genetic testing done. There's nothing there. No. So she referred us for the, um, the Hudson Alpha. We were case number testing. one. We were case number one. So if you add up all of the DNA in your chromosomes, it's three billion letters in a row that we can map each and every one of them and map their order. What we find is that many children that have these otherwise inexplicable and very difficult symptoms, that the cause is rooted in their DNA and it's a result of a very teeny tiny change to their DNA that we just now have the technology to, our, to, to look at all those letters and, and make those discoveries. I thought they're going to find something but say, but we don't know if it explains all that's going on. So anyway, we got there and we got the diagnosis and it just was a huge weight lifted off our shoulders. It was liberating. It's called Cornelia DeLange syndrome. It really tied in everything that she struggles with. There's not gonna be a, a magic solution that says we, we're gonna, you know, bingo, you take this drug and it's all fixed. But having the diagnosis is, is an important step um, for that family to have an explanation for one thing. Then they move forward. So now that I understand what the diagnosis is, what can I do? What's out there? You know, of being able to say, this is why potting is difficult. This is why she has stomach issues. This is why her communication is not where it needs to be. Just seeking out movement, you know, that's something she loves. She could go outside and swing for hours and get into this zone and that's part of the syndrome. She's fighting a battle that no nobody could have known and it was just deep inside her and it took medicine to catch up and find it. <laughs>